Greetings and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I am Alicia, your host, and today we are going to be taking a look at Debussy's two arabesques, which are enduringly famous, well-known piano compositions, especially the first one. So what we're going to do in today's video is take a look at each of these arabesques. We're just going to do like a short and sweet tour. This isn't going to be a long video, just to give you a taste of what the compositions are about and to give you a little bit of background information so that you can appreciate them in more depth when you listen to them. Let's get started. Debussy's two arabesques, L66, were written relatively early in his career between 1888 and 1891. They're both written for solo piano. Now, the first arabesque especially gives us a feel of Debussy's blossoming impressionistic style. He's able to convey scenes and images in a really emotive way, in a way that isn't defined by borders or structure. His music has a very flow, a very free and flowing sound to it. The first arabesque is of course the most famous and you'll probably recognize it when we take a listen to it. It's written in the key of E major and it's actually, it's got a little bit of a leaning towards box counterpoint style, which we'll talk about a little bit. The second arabesque is fun and lively and just not as well known as the first one, but it's still really awesome. It's just a completely different mood and character. It's also highly ornamental, just like the first one. Arabesques are ornamental as a general rule. Henley marks them as a level four in piano difficulty, which is medium by their metrics, but they are grade 10 through the Royal Conservatory. So you're not gonna be able to play these pieces unless you're getting to be a fairly advanced piano player. Like all famous classical compositions, the first arabesque has been all over pop culture, whether it's being sampled by Alicia Keys, used in the show Skins, or even used in like as a puzzle in Final Fantasy V. These are the names and tempo markings for each arabesque. Andantino con moto is like a quick walk with motion, and Allegretto scherzando is fairly quick and playful. And just a note on the classification of the word arabesque, it's a really open-ended musical style, pretty free form. Basically, the only qualification of an arabesque is that it's highly ornamental. It's based on a Turkish arabesque, and those are very ornamental, but otherwise romantic and impressionist arabesques bear pretty much no resemblance to the Turkish music they're based on. Both arabesques are in ABA format, which is basically just a two-part form with a return to the original parts at the end. So A is part one, B is part two, and then ABA means you're going back to part one. Debussy wanted to create a serene and gentle mood in this piece, which he accomplishes by all the rolling, cascading notes, and as I mentioned before, he really paints a picture of a mood as opposed to like a really specific defined image through sound. This is very abstract. But if you think about impressionistic paintings, maybe you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about. The, the images evoke a, a mood and a feeling more than they represent something perfectly accurately. We start off in the key of E major. You can see the four sharps there. The introduction and the first theme, the A section of this arabesque, use a variety of chord patterns, but almost all in the first inversion, which just means it's the chord that's the next step above root position. So you can see I have a few of these written out. We have an A chord that starts on C sharp. We have a G sharp minor chord that starts on B and so on. This is a writing style that's fairly common to impressionist composers. And the whole effect is very atmospheric with the rolling left hand pattern, which Debussy really liked to use in his piano music. The left hand pattern is particularly challenging when matched up with the right hand, since it involves a technique called polyrhythm. Polyrhythm is when you have two different rhythms. In piano, it's often one rhythm in one hand and then a different rhythm in another hand. In this case, you can see it's three against two. You have these right hand triplets that have to fit in the span of two eighths notes. So three versus two. This three against two section is almost counterpoint and texture like Bach. A friend of Debussy said this section has two voices progressing in alternation and united as a single melody. Let's take a quick listen.
of the B section or the middle section. It's shorter and poetic. It's less ambling. It's in the key of A major, and you can see that it starts off with this E, D, E, C sharp pattern, which clearly signals a mood change. You'll hear it when we listen to it right away. It's, a, it's very different in sound. And that's how ABA form works. The B section is a contrast to the A section. And the B section carries on going through a bunch of modulations and key changes. Again, something that Debussy and other impressionist composers are fond of. Of this section, Schmitz, who Debussy's friend is, said it is rich and abandoned, swaying impulses, tenderness, and fantasy. Let's take a listen. After that, we see a return to the A section, and it's more or less a repeat with a few subtle changes. We can hear this piece as a transition between Romantic era and Impressionist era pieces, because Romantic era music tended to be, late Romantic era music tended to be shorter in form and not nearly as elaborate, which is true for these. These are shorter compositions. Actually, the short form is a lot like music today, which is maybe some of the reason that we can really appreciate these forms just because they're more natural to us. And it also hints at impressionistic style because of the use of dissonance and like a non-adherence to traditional harmonic forms. The second arabesque is in the key of G major, and it, the whole thing is quicker and livelier than the first, which you can see indicated in the tempo allegretto scherzando, playful and fast. This arabesque is not nearly as well known as the first, and perhaps isn't as harmonically innovative, but it's still a lot of fun. And like the first one, it's in ABA format, nice and simple, very free form. We have some long-held left-hand chords and playful right-hand trills. And just like the first arabesque, there are a bunch of modulations and key changes throughout the whole thing. What you'll notice in the A section is that there's a consistent rhythmic motive and a rhythmic or a motive in general is just a repeated pattern. You can see it's a set of triplet sixteenths and then an eighth, triplet sixteenth and an eighth, etc. Mainly in the right hand, but it does jump into the left hand. And this pattern continues throughout most of the piece. We get a break in the B section. The middle section moves through some key changes. Mainly we see it being in the key of C major with the canceled F sharp. Our right hand rhythm changes and that's the biggest distinction between parts. And what you'll see is this sequence of rising thirds. So here's a pair of thirds, here's a pair of thirds, here's a pair of thirds, etc, etc throughout the section. The whole effect is really bubbly and childlike and lighthearted, which many of us forget that Debussy was excellent at conveying. This quote can give us some insight into the way Debussy composed music such as these arabesques. He wrote, I am more and more convinced that music, by its very nature, cannot be cast into a traditional and fixed form. It is made up of colors and rhythms. The rest is a lot of humbug invented by Fridges imbeciles riding on the backs of the masters, who, for the most part, wrote almost nothing but period music. He blusters in his antagonistic style, but then he concludes revealingly, Bach alone has an idea of the truth. And that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And do go and check out the full versions of these pieces. They're not very long. It's not a gigantic time investment to listen to them. Uh, they're really quite awesome and lovely. And if you want to get more in depth with Claire de Lune, we've also done an analysis of that composition by Debussy as well. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one. Almost like music to, actually it's a lot like ah, pieces, which none of us are 